Welcome to 3 Minute Thursdays. 3 Minute Thursdays are a short breakdown of topics that you will see within your flight training here at UND. The goal is for you, the student, to have a better understanding of what it takes to become a safe, professional pilot. Hello, my name is Tyler Lauer. I'm a lead flight instructor at UND Aerospace. Welcome to the final video in our landing series. The touchdown and rollout during any landing is important. Here is where we make notable changes during our normal short field and soft field landing techniques. Today, I'm going to simplify the basic concepts that can be taken into every single landing you perform. After executing the perfect flare, the airplane runs out of energy and finally, the mains touchdown. So, we're done flying, right? Wrong. During loss of directional control events, common contributing factors are releasing the crosswind input in improper foot position during landing. As the airplane touches down, we continue to fly. If we are landing in a crosswind, the flight controls are slowly added to fold deflection into the wind. Here is my first tip for success. Remember, as we touch down, we are maintaining the nose on the horizon. Whether you are performing a short field, soft field, normal, or power off 180, the flight controls will all end up the same way. This means the ailerons will be deflected into the wind and the elevator all the way back. There is absolutely no difference in the final position of the yoke, regardless of what type of landing you are performing. To ensure that your rudder inputs are what you desire, you need to place emphasis on proper foot position. During the landing, you need to have your heels on the floor. Ensure that the balls of your feet are on this part of the rudder pedal. If your feet are too high, you may cause unwanted brake pressure, and in the crosswind scenario, excess brake pressure could be applied on one side. This may lead to overcorrection and ultimately a loss of directional control. If you have large feet, simply having your heels on the floor may not be enough. Only apply brakes when the airplane has begun to slow down. If you lock up the brakes right away, there is little friction between the tires and the runway. You will be able to hear this because the tires will squeal very easily due to the lack of friction. Add brakes when the weight is on the mains and only the amount required for the desired landing technique. As you decelerate on the runway, the last step is to get yourself to an appropriate speed before turning off the runway. This should be similar to the brisk walking speed used while taxiing. Remember, if you are going too fast to safely exit the runway, advise ATC or, in the event that you are at an uncontrolled airport, announce your intentions to the other aircraft and continue to the next available taxiway. Airspeed control is one of the easiest ways to improve your landings. Organizationally, we have done a great job emphasizing our stabilized approaches. Remember, you should not maintain 66 knots into the roundout. As a friendly reminder, I teach my students to enter the roundout no faster than the mid-50s. This will set you up to dissipate your remaining energy so that you can touch down just above stall speed with the nose in the perfect position to land. Once you are on the ground, you are not done flying. You need to maintain safe and positive aircraft control all the way back to the parking tee. Thank you for watching 3 Minute Thursdays. If you have a topic that you would like to see covered, please comment below. Remember, fly safe and we'll see you on the flight line. Foot position is very important. I don't like what I did with my hands. <laughs> Super duper, gang. All right.